Okay, so uh, following the problems that we have on the f in the previous session, I took over. I am taking over this talk. Thanks to my colleague Leo, that has has allowed me to do so, so I can focus on the conference and not on my talk for the next days. So, the talk on advanced on life, life student annotations will be probably held on the 323 link slot tomorrow morning. And if not, we, we, will, tell you, we will tell you. Okay, so being quite fast, I'm here for updating on PAIA 5.1. First, let me say that I'm very happy for being here. I think it's the sixth time I present PAIA, so it's impressive for me. I never thought I was to do that. And very, very fast, because most of you know Paella. Paella is the other player. I think the, one of the, um, of the key points of Paella is that it's able to integrate content that is outside of Opencast. So once you have all your content inside Opencast, you, it's, it's easy to use Theodul. But if you have content that is outside for any reason, maybe it's easier to use Paella. Maybe. Okay. In, so, also, as we have seen on the, on the on current talk, we took a decision, decision that all Impaya is inside of the box. It's a different decision, decision that carries different, well, different problems and different advantages, I think. Yeah. Okay. So, going with Paya 5.1, we have changed the colors. I think it's our most of the standing change. <laughs> so our colors are more like uh, Harvard ones. Thanks for that. <laughs> because most of people, even us, like more Harvard colors than us. Yeah. So now we are black. Anyway, Pai has different skins. So this is a new skin, and you can use the old one or make a, a, a one for yourselves. Going for the technical update, I will also be very short. We, we have moved to ECMAScript 6, to AS6, which is a new version of JavaScript, which means a lot of things I can tell, but I don't really understand. But, <laughs> as Fernando there, <laughs> thanks. But, um, but they, uh, my developers promise that it's better, more stable code. The, pro the only problem is that maybe you have to, re to review your plugins, if you have to do so, and make sure they are compatible with, with the new release of the standard. Only may, because uh, most of our plugins have no problem on being ported to the new version. The other technical thing that we are moving on is that we, we are trying to get multiple video streams and end streams and end audio streams, because now we are limited to two video streams. And we are working on that. This is something that has been harder, it's been quite hard. But uh, now we, are, we have multiple audio streams. So we're supporting different audio streams. For instance, if you have had a dub audio track, you can use that. Uh, the, the ability for doing that is in the, in the core of Paella, but up to now it's headless. We don't have any button for that. I think we will put a button somewhere. <clears throat> and an important point that is not especially related to Paella, I think it's very important for any of us as a community, is that people from WebKit has added the ability for for iOS devices, for iPads, to play multiple video streams. So this is something that is really forbidden on, on iOS, for Mac platforms, but they know they are going to relax that, that uh, requirement, and then uh, you, could, you will be able to play multiple video streams through only one with audio. Only, it's only one video plus audio, and all the rest, only video. So, for instance, we are waiting that for being able to play Paya properly with the two video streams. I think Theodore will be the same. Uh, the patch is already on WebKit, and 
we suppose that that will be with the next iOS release, iOS 11. Uh, we, are, we are very excited for that and we are waiting for that. Also, <coughs> uh, for finishing the technical part, we are building RPMs for Paella. So I want to thank Lars, which is working on the other room, because he has made an R RPM for us, for Paella. So we will add Paella to the RPM open cache repository. So it will be very easy to, to deploy Paella on, on, on an open cache installation that uses RPMs, of course. Yes, new plugins. So these things I told was related to Paya Core, to Paya Core. Related to new plugins, we have done some of them. If you go to the list of plugins on the Paya site, there's a lot of, so we keep adding things. What things we have thought? So we are supporting picture-in-picture -picture mode in Safari. So it's, it's a feature of, of Safari for Mac that you can detach the video window. So you can detach one, one of the streams on Paella and take it somewhere. So for instance, if you have dual, dual uh, screens, you can use one for the video, one video and one for the slides, for instance. We are also supporting AirPlay, so there's a button for, for making AirPlay of one video, of course, because Apple, Apple is not supporting multiple video streams already. We have made our video rating plugin just for putting stars on the videos and evaluate the videos. It's, you need a rest endpoint, as, as Karen presented on, on the talk. I think. Uh, we are we we talk in the list about the annotations plugins or the ability of the opencast backend to store things and i think uh, we want to address with lars and the rest of the list how how to store that but by the moment we have a we have make a rest endpoint for storing the votes for the videos and we are using for this university and then we have done new video plugins. I say experimental because we aren't really sure what is the final use of them. They are working, but that's good. I want to talk a bit about video plugins in Paella. So you know in Paella, uh, you have two video containers, several, one or more audio containers, and other things on top of that. Each of the video containers can have different video plugins, video adapters. So if you want to play a content that is blah, 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 you have to write a video plugin for that. Okay, so Paya will try to, to select the most appropriate video plugin to play the video content. So no, then we have done video plugins for Paella and we did the 360 video plugins that you, see, you saw yesterday, both of them, one for the X rectangular video, another one for the Ricoh Theta. Uh, we realized when we were working with the, with the Theta video, we realized that we are able to work in WebGL. WebGL is for, for making transformations of the video. So we have done a, a Chroma video player that is something that we wanted to have for a long time because of our polymer recordings. Our polymer recordings are picture in picture, everything is born. So what, Noah, what we are able to do with this video is working, yeah, is things like that. Uh, I think it's this, oops. So as you see, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, is yeah. Okay. So I think it's things like this one or this. So well, I think you saw our polymedia video. That should be some of the options that, that are here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is already on the screen. So we are able to paint yeah, on top of anything. <laughs> yeah, so with chroma key, 
So he has a, a white ba background. So yeah, you are able to do fine transformations with that. We, uh, we want to use that because we want to be able to uh, use dual stream videos in the composition that we currently have, that is the teacher in front of the slide. If I could, maybe. So it should be, no, I don't know what, what option it is. Uh, this? Yeah. Okay, this is the, the, the usual option that we are using. Well, the point is that uh, we write a video plugin that is, uh, is using OpenGL, and OpenGL has do those kind of strange functions for, for doing that. I think it's something that could be replicated in, in other environments. Yeah, for sure. Okay, I'm going back to the, <coughs> back, yeah, to the talk. Mm -hmm. and another plugin, another video plugin is the YouTube video plugin. That is something that we are not currently using, but it's working. And that we feel that that could be interesting for, that could be, No, oh, sorry, I think we, I should. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, that should be interesting for maybe for the smaller universities that don't want to have a video server. So you know that you can play YouTube videos. So uh, we write a video plugin that in fact is the YouTube video player. So as a video container can has a video plugin that is a YouTube video player, you can have two, two of them. And you can use with captions or with all the, all the things on Paya. So then if I press play, oh, and everything works, yeah, it's demo effect, sorry. Yeah. Then you have, this is a video from YouTube and the other one is another video from YouTube. So what we have inside is the actual YouTube player. So if I go to the end, more at the end, then it's finishing. More there. For instance, well, well, you see the buttons of YouTube, compartir, share, see later, share, see later. And if you go to the end, even you have the, the suggestions of YouTube, because it's the actual YouTube video player that is inside of Pi as a video plugin. So, um, well, so this has one advantage, that is that this allows us to, to honor the YouTube license, which says that you only get YouTube content with a YouTube player. So I think it's, well, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> And the other, sorry, I, I, yeah. and yeah, and the other thing that is that that I have to say is that use with care, because we are using the YouTube video player. So at some point, somewhere YouTube can change anything, and you could get no use. But I I feel that there's a use case for that. So for instance, you could upload a picture-in-picture -picture version of your dual videos, and then also upload the videos separately. And then, as far as the player is working, you could use the dual video stream. So I feel it's, it could be interesting, especially for those of you that don't, that don't have a, a media server. This is more or less all about the future work. Uh, Fernando, I put the, the cards already. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. What is what I will, we, what we want to do? Multi-stream. Yeah, we want to be as as good as Theodore in that. We will do multiple videos in iOS. We are waiting for that update, and when the, this update is out, we will work on that. We put Zoom. We want to work in a new style of putting things on the screen. We want to think again on that. That don't mean that we aren't unsatisfied. Only we want to think again, and whatever suggestion you, you have. So thanks as usual to our supporters and all the people that put us issues and, and code on Paella.
That's all. Thanks. No, right on time. Any question? Hi, uh, uh, great presentation, Carlos. Uh, I, I have a question about the YouTube plugin. Yeah. Uh, what audio source it's used? The, yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's using both. So in Paella, you tell which audio source you are using, so it's sourcing both, both of them. So place both of them. This is something that is a bit odd at the beginning. So usually in the Paya configuration file, you tell that only use the first audio source. I'm right? Yeah, thanks. I think that the YouTube API uh, don't let you to set the, the volume uh, as easy as in, in a regular uh, video, HTML video plugin. And so in the YouTube player, uh, we are using both uh, audio sources. Yeah. Any other question? No? So thanks, and I let Michael go. Okay, hi. Um, so my name is Michael. I work for the Elan. And I want to talk about some project I did last year. This project was done with, uh, in cooperation with the University of Stuttgart. And at the University of Stuttgart, they use Opencast and Elias, Elias LMS. Um, the professors um, at Stuttgart, they already used the questions integrated in Ilias to make some kind of tests. And they spend work uh, into formulating these questions and um, yeah, building them up, building them up. And um, the idea was that these questions could somehow be integrated into uh, OpenCast videos. So um, we came up with this idea um, that we call now interactive videos in OpenCast. And um, essentially, what this uh, wants to achieve is. Um, the, the author um, needed some kind of um, ability to import this uh, question pool from Ilias into OpenCast. Um, then there should be some kind of UI interface for authors, so for not technical users, to insert these questions into videos, into lectures. And the user should be able to get these um, inserted questions displayed and should uh, be able to interact with these um, with, with any kind of dialogue. And at least, uh, at last, um, these um, interactions done by the users, by the viewers, they should be stored um, in, in some kind. And uh, yeah, I will uh, go into these uh, points one by one. <clears throat> so at first, for the um, importing of the question pool part, um, we heard in other talks about the IMS. Uh, as far as I understand, it's a non-profit organization. Um, they are trying to um, advance learning technology. Um, they, are, um, they spend their time um, with uh, defining standards, and um, the QTI standard that I'm explaining next um, comes out of their work. So QTI stands for Question and Test Interoperability. and um, the idea, the idea is to make um, these questions data, this, um, the, the questions uh, formulating and the answers transportable between applications. Um, they achieve this by defining a data model. Um, they use UML, 
the data is um, then stored in XML files. And um, if you think of the Ilios Opencast um, use case, this is exactly what um, what this this makes. It lets um, Ilias, the, the QTI editor in Ilias, define questions, and you can transport via QTI to Opencast. Um, so, because Stuttgart uses Ilias, and um, I built this for Stuttgart, um, I will. Um, mainly talk about Ilias QTI. The QTI standard is very complex, and um, if you have Ilias QTI and another uh, QTI editor, that's, it, it's not guaranteed to be 100% compatible. If you open up a Ilias QTI file, it looks some kind like this. Um, there's very little header information, and it's um, mainly just a list of items, and these items are the questions with their corresponding answer options. So um, you see, I, I shortened this to, to show you. You see um, one, one item with some, some basic uh, metadata, and um, after that, you, you could in, insert many, many more items, so many more questions. If you look into such a question item, you store metadata like the Ilias version, the question type, author, and, and much more. Pretty basic. Um, the um, interesting part is um, the presentation part of an item. Here you define um, what the question says, what the user gets um, showed to understand uh, what the question is about. And um, in the response part um, later on, you define the possible answers. Um, the next part would be the response processing. Here you can, um, depending on the, on the question type you select, um, this gets, I, I should have said before, um, in Ilias you get an editor, and um, this looks very complicated. In the editor it's pretty simple. You just click which type of question you want to have, and this gets generated. And um, here you can see that's only multiple choice, single response, and um, this shows uh, how many points you get for answering correctly, for answering wrongly. Okay. Um, in, um, so this um, is implemented for OpenCast T rule player. Um, I ex expand, extended the player um, with some little changes. This you only see in the author's view. So um, two, the, the, the top part is two little buttons for importing and adding um, yeah, question data, and um, each question you add uh, shows up in a new tab down there. That's called interactive video. Um, the import dialog is pretty simple. You choose a file, click import, and uh, a whole pool, a whole list of questions gets imported. Then you can go through the video, select um, the time you want to insert the question, and um, you can choose some options, um, like it, if the question is obligatory, or it must be answered correctly. Um, you see that uh, the top two questions are grayed out. This is the first convention we came to is to only use each question once for each video. So if you add them, then you can't add them again. Um, the user view looks like this. The buttons uh, for import and add are gone. And if the user hits the time where a question is added, um, a simple dialog pops up. Um, I, I, I'm not a designer. I choose to go with the design of the theory player, which is very generic. And I think the idea behind this generic design is that it's easy to adapt to your corporate identity. So the user gets um, some information about how the question is defined. It's obligatory. It must be answered correctly. The answers are um, yeah, printed there. He can. Um, check his chosen answer and um, click the check button below to get a response if it's correct or not. Uh, if the answer is not obligatory, it must not be answered correctly. He can just skip by clicking continue. Yeah. So as I said, um, when the user um, answers his question or clicks continue without answering it, um, this information should be stored in the learning record store 
just for the ones who don't know what a learning record store is, it's a simple data store for learning experiences and these learning, learning experiences um, get transferred to the LRS um, via these statements. It's a simple construct of actor verb object. Um, it just says things like student 12 answered correctly question 4. I don't know. And um, this LR LRS stores these learning experiences and um, the idea behind this is to could go ahead and um, harvest data from this and do some kind of analysis. So you could think of some kind of feedback for the professor how, 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 which ratio of the students got which questions correctly or not. Yeah, LRS um, is a simple HTTP protocol and um, it works with, with an um, API that's called X API. The X API or Experience API is, uh, well, it's an interface for e-learning software. Um, it enables systems to speak to each other, so I wrote a the module for OpenCast that speaks XAPI, and you can, I choose a simple generic LRS learning record star, installed it, it speaks XAPI, so they can talk to each other. And it um, formulates this interface, how you package your information to, to put it into the LRS. Um, in my research for the XAPI stuff, I got confused. Um, so here's a little story about XAPI. Um, this all ori originated, um, the USA ran a progr um, program called Advanced Distributed Learning, ADL. And uh, the ADL um, uh, tries to standardize and modelize learning. So the ADL um, created a project that is called TinCan. Their aim was to replace the Scrum standard. Um, they hired a company called Rostiki, Rostizi, to develop um, or to, to work in the tin can uh, project to develop a tin can API. And um, when Rostiki, Rostiki, when the firm finished the work, they released a product called XAPI. But the problem was that um, the development was uh, closely followed by some people and the main tin can stuck in their head. So now there's a great confusion in the internet. Uh, what's it called? The official name, in my opinion, should be XAPI. But uh, even the home page, where you can get more information about this, gives you the option to switch all strings from XAPI to TinCan. Go with XAPI. So, um, to not get confused, this is the main thing. I will walk you through this. Um, you start by the QTI editor. I choose the Ilias QTI editor uh, for Stuttgart people. Um, you could theoretically choose every QTI editor, um, click together your questions, export them. There's an OpenCast module that, um, that uh, which, which you can give this QTI data and it transforms it in some kind of OpenCast QTI format. So we have a common base and um, yeah. As I said before, Ilias QTI looks, could, could look different than under QTI data, and uh, this module converts it to a, a known base. Um, this, is, um, this is kicked off by the Theodore player, um, the import button. And um, if you import the, uh, the questions, you can add them. Well, this, this goes over the um, author's view, and the students got the questions um, in this little box, as I showed before. And if the student answers uh, a question, it goes to the LRS. Or oh, it goes over the OpenCast module I wrote for the LRS connection and um, pushes this into your LRS system. I, I'm not sure. I think um, some LMS um, integrate LRS systems. Um, there are a couple of LRS systems um, out there that are standalone. And I choose the reference implementation of ADL, I think. To, to test my stuff. Yeah. Um, at this point, I could do a demo. Um, I was told to, to be quick about my, my talking. Um, Carlos, are you here? Okay. Um, well, if nobody stops me, I'm going to do a demo now. 
Um, this is a local OpenCast installation. You can see this, right? Okay. And uh, yeah, I, I already said this. Oh, God. For some reason, my mouse is lagging. Great. <laughs> Yeah, my, my mouse does not work. Um, I'm sorry. Um, I will try to, to do this by keyboard shortcuts. Um, the, the R is where the import button is. You open this up, you get this dialog. You choose a file, which doesn't work. Oh, sorry. Nah, I'm, I'm sorry, the demo is pretty pretty laggy okay but you you saw the steps in, in the screenshots right um, if anybody of you wants to um, I can give you an URL where I set up a public test server to play around with this yeah um, at the end, I'm uh, going to reflect on some improvements. Well, the user experience could be better. I'm not a designer. Um, this is just my, my basic um, suggestion for some buttons. Um, the storage part of the question. So if you add questions to a video, um, they, for now, get stored in, well, on the file system. And it's not that good, because archiving of videos doesn't uh, reflect the edit videos, uh, the edit questions. So optimally, um, you would store the edit questions in the media package, but this, um, yeah, it's further work. Um, yeah, uh, as I said, um, I um, only implemented this for the Ilias QTI sources, and uh, if you want to import other QTI data from other editors, you you should test if it works uh, out of the box, or if you have to implement uh, some some tiny bit of code to reflect on the other QTI standard. Um, yeah, and the L uh, LRS part, the storing of the answers, is pretty rudimentary, rudimentary and uh, you have to think about what you want to store. This depends on, on a couple of factors, like um, your local laws and stuff. Yeah, and um, I hope you understood my examples, and um, I would be interested in, in suggestions, what I could add, or what should be added. Okay. But thanks for now. Any questions? I don't want that. Okay. Please, the, the microphone's good. No, as I said, at the moment they're really, it's bad they're stored on the file system. Oh, okay. it, it works for simple installations, but it's not a, a good solution. Oh, okay, thanks. No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thanks, but. Is this question still open? Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a question uh, when it comes to the data written back to your learning management system. Because, you know, there's a lot of security involved. A lot of data is uh, transported from, uh, you know, the results of the tests and that may be important. Uh, how do you solve this? Is this encrypted or is there a password uh, needed to write back the data from the player? You know, it's yeah, you, HTML, you, you can manipulate stuff uh, within the browser with Firebug, etc. Did you think about are we, that? Are we talking about the answers that get stored in the learning record store? Yeah. Well, um, if you, 
depends on your network setup, where you run the learning record store, if you have to talk outside of, or inside your internet. But if you, if you run HTTPS, you should be quite safe, right? The idea is that you basically can manipulate your, your code in, within Firebug. You know, you have, a, you have a possibility to hack around. That's, so, so uh, that's what the, the question focuses on. A bad student could change his results. Yeah. Well, a good student. A good student. <laughs> of course. Um, this is not set up for, for any kind of, of um, uh, test or something. This is just, I see it as a, as a feedback option for the, for the lecturer. Um, even the checking of the uh, questions, right? It's, it's, it's not super safe. If, if you want to, you can, you can uh, minim, minim, manipulate this pretty easy. Um, should not be used for testing. Should be used for, for some kind of information, yeah. I was just missing that hint because I was yeah. asking myself, how is he doing all that stuff with authentication and, and there was no word about it. So could you say it's just intended to try around and uh, just for... For now, I, I mean, you, you can, uh, you can um, work on this, you can adapt it to your, to your liking, but for now it's, um, yeah, it's a start in, in this direction. For now, it's the front end. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm again. So I'm talking about not a new, pl uh, not, not a new product. <laughs> so let's talk about the social event of today, the Mascleta. Yes, I'm going to be very fast. So, Mascleta is an event that happens 2 p.m. o'clock, not Spanish time, daily between 1 and 18 of March. At this hour, it's a, it's a day fireworks with light and, and sound. So, it's in the Plaza Ayuntamiento. So, you see, it's pretty crowded. So, that's the reason, and there's a, a huge traffic jam. That's the reason because we have to leave. Because if everything goes smooth, we don't have any problem. But maybe three minutes after, you can arrive. So that, that's, the, that's, the, that's the question. So the plan, grab the lunch, there are some, <laughs> and go to the toilet, probably in the other order, but that is up to you. <laughs> yeah. So we have two buses there on the street, and the buses will drop us in the Plaza de Toros. OK, I, so here, it's easy to find. So, uh, then we will go to the Mascleta. Mascleta is a, I will finish around 14.20. The, the bus will take us at 3 p.m. So, there will be time for, for any of you to do whatever you want. And of course, you can come again afterwards. So, I think at 3 p.m. Spanish time, we will leave. And if, no, if somebody is not in the bus, <laughs> Can, can come by their own means, because we are not going to have a list of, the, of that. Yeah, so bus will drop off here, and then we have to walk, it's six minutes, by the, by the dots, by the dots to the Plaza del Ayuntament. So I think it's, it's, well, it's left and right. There, there's no sense on, on that we lose. I have brought my official bag. <laughs> so, if you follow the duck, it's probably that I'm under the duck. <laughs> it's not sure, but yeah, maybe. Okay, some final remarks. We, we will have a security guard there. As you have seen, the, the, the square is pretty crowded, so I suggest to leave here all the computers and so, because 
What we have said to the security guard is that nobody can enter until we return. So if, if you are not coming, <laughs> I'm going to take, take something out. But you can leave everything here, all backpacks here, yes. The door will be closed and the guard will be in front. So there's no choice. I will do that. Watch your wallet and so on. Just pretty crowded and so. Yes, and the masklet is a bit noisy. So local trick, don't deal as such. No, that's not a way. Open your mouth a bit. You can do, yes, a bit. Yeah, it's not really necessary. Okay, and 3 p.m. on Plaza de Toros to go back. Maybe you find time to get, grab a beer or whatever, or I don't know. Let's try this, okay? Questions? No questions? So, thank ah. The lunch is in, in a bags that are down, downstairs. It's a grab and go lunch. Yes, right now. Great talk.